first of all, I'd just like to wish all of you a most blessed Easter tide. It's nice now that we're celebrating Easter much longer. Already three weeks before Easter started the whole Passion theme, and we celebrated Passion Tide to two weeks before. Of course, it's not from the Bible, it was just created by Christianity. But it's it's nice because it's too important of a holiday just to celebrate in one day. It's like the Indian weddings. Indian weddings are uh, too important to celebrate, so they do it in three, four days. And uh, the wedding feast will be in three and a half years for three and a half time periods. So it's appropriate that we celebrate a longer time and really reflect on the meaning. I mentioned recently that commemoration means celebrating in memory of something. And God commanded the Israelites on many occasions to commemorate special occasions like the Passover, for example. So they were supposed to celebrate in memory of the great things God did. And I said recently to it, when, when the celebration means more than the event, then it lost its meaning. So the Passover, all those things to the Jews became a tradition, which is fine, but it can't just be a tradition. It has to have a deep meaning. So let's take the time also when we study the DSG and the, the B circulars, every Easter, it takes on a deeper and deeper meaning for us. The chief apostle in the B circular a week ago wrote that in this difficult times, the members need to see that the apostles are confident. So they want to see that we're, we're positive because we trust God. So even if bad things happen around us, like COVID, we remain calm because we know that in the end, everything will turn out all right. And that's one of the wonderful messages of Easter, because Good Friday seemed like a complete dead end, as the chief apostle spoke on Easter two years ago. It was a complete dead end. The disciples were lost, confused, unbelievably sad, and they went into depths of depression and fear. And then on Easter, they were at the height of joy. I often wonder why God made such a dramatic difference. It's called contrast. When something contrasts from deep sorrow to unimaginable joy, then it, things become clear. So contrast is so that we get it, that it becomes clear in our heads, that even though some things in life bring us much sadness, the day of the Lord's going to bring unimaginable joy that we won't even remember the suffering. So we won't even think about the suffering. It's like when a woman gives birth to a baby, goes through a lot of suffering, but she soon forgets all the suffering with the joy of the baby. She doesn't go around saying, oh, you little stinker, you caused me so much pain when you were born. All she does is think about the joy of the child. And that's our joy, that's our Easter, that's our resurrection waiting for us. And the, the first brothers and sisters, they were disappointed and they were also confused because they were waiting for Christ to come back any day. They sold everything, put it in common, and were waiting for him just any day to show up. And some of them started to die. So some of the congregation got old. And it said they fell asleep. In other words, they died. And now the congregation was all distraught because they said, what's going to happen? Christ's going to come for us, but those that are died will be left behind. And Paul said, oh, you foolish ones, don't you realize that Christ resurrected means the dead can also resurrect and will resurrect. So don't be sad for the departed because they're going to go with us. In fact, they, God will go for them first. So when we think of all these things, then we realize there's no dead end for God. And when we come to these situations in life, then we have to tell the children of God, that means the story's not over. Because in the, in the end of the story, the good guy wins. The honesty wins. Kindness wins. Love wins. And sincerity wins. And faith wins. 
So true and faithful, those are the two main characters that summarize everything. We have to be sincere and we have to be faithful. So Easter is a wonderful reminder and we have to be as the apostles, the example of courage, the example of happiness, even when life isn't happy. Of course, it's not Christ that was not smiling on the way to the cross. So you don't rejoice in sorrow and tribulation, but we know it's not the end of the story. And that's why we have confidence to go on. So let's bring that confidence to the members wherever we go. And even if COVID gets worse, but we know that it's not in vain. God uses this thousands of years of evolution with such patience and such detail and such accuracy that all of us, all mankind, not one person out of the billions and billions will be lost to God. Just like not one drop of water ever was lost in the creation. It's all still there from millions of years ago. So God's so almighty that he planned this for millions of years. And since Adam and Eve fell into sin, he's done nothing else than work on our salvation. So I don't know if that's 90,000 years. We don't know how long ago Adam and Eve were, but we know it's more than 6,000 years. When I was a child, we used to say Adam and Eve were 6,000 years ago. But we realize now it's much humankind's been around much longer. Yeah, so all the detail, even those that died in the Passover, the firstborn, God did all that for us. Otherwise, Christ would not have been able to have been born in Jerusalem and salvation take place under the Roman Empire. So God did all that. So millions of Egyptian boys, firstborns, all had to die. But they also died for themselves because Christ also brings salvation for them. So it was a great experience for the Israelites, not a, such a good experience for the Egyptians. But even for the Egyptians, it was meant for their salvation. So in hindsight, we can see, okay, it's not the end of the story. It's only the middle of the story. In the end of the story, everything turns out right as it should be. And justice will reign. And that justice means everything that's wrong is made right. So justice is a positive thing. And judgment's always meant in that sense. Not as a condemnation, but judgment is meant as a correction to make everything right. Easter is such an important time, and now we even live in the afterthoughts of Easter right up to Ascension Day, another outstanding day, and then Pentecost, our day of rebirth. So enjoy uh, all this, this season. It's a wonderful season. Just like Christmas now, we celebrate Christmas four weeks before. We don't just celebrate one day, but we celebrate it for weeks and weeks. So we're quite rich in the Christian calendar because our holidays actually are joys of celebrating never end.